In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up multiple projects in Visual Studio. I'll talk a little about the terminology like solutions, projects, assemblies, and also namespaces. And I can show you how to access files from different assemblies as well. This will be very useful moving forwards. So if we open Visual Studio, we kind of get this dialogue here where we can create a brand new project here. So we're going to click this. And then we're just going to create a console application. So if I click next here, it's going to ask me for the name of my project. Now, because I chose a console application here, this is what represents like a graphical user interface, something the user might see. Similarly, you could have a Windows Forms application, which is also a GUI. But this is the graphical user interface project because it, it has a window that we can see. So when naming this project, for example, it's quite common in applications to have what's called a three-layered architecture, where you have one project representing the interface. Maybe on a website that might have HTML. On a console application, it would have like the black window and any logic to do with that. And then you have a middle layer, sometimes called the business layer. And that has all the background calculations, all the logic, everything to do with the brains of the application. And perhaps the third layer will be like a database where all the data things are concerned. So the ability of getting data from a database, you know, maybe it's paired to an Oracle database or an SQL database. So all things to do with the data layer. And this is what's quite commonly known as a three layered architecture. So when you create this project in C Sharp here in Visual Studio, first we're creating the GUI here, and this is the console application in this example. So I'm going to call it something like that. So typically what I do and what other you know software companies do is when you create the GUI, you might put GUI in the name of the project. So if the project was called test app, for example, you might see something like this, like testapp.gui or testapp.gui or perhaps GUI test app, something like that. So from the name, you know instantly that you're dealing with the GUI, the graphical user interface. So I'm just going to do testapp.gui, for example. And this is, you don't have to do it like this, but this is kind of good practice and it's quite common as well. So if you continue with your endeavors, you'll see this quite a lot. So I'm going to create the project now. So here we have our GUI. It doesn't really do much. It's just a black window that's going to instantly close. But this project here, if we come over to the right, this project here represents anything to do with our GUI. So anything graphical that the user might see, anything to do with the GUI. So all of that is contained within here. You can see at the top here we have a solution. Now, solution can hold a number of projects, maybe 10, 20, 30, and we can add different projects in here. So, for example, let's create a business layer, and this will have all the code, all the logic, all the calculations, for example. And again, um, when creating a sol solution, if it's just a small test um, project, for example, very tiny, maybe you're just doing a quick mock-up, then having a three-layered architecture is quite you know, ambitious. It might not be needed. But if you know in advance it's going to be a, a large project or something that might talk to a database or have a lot of complexity, then you do need to consider your architecture before you get started. So let's create another project now. We're going to create the business layer. So if I right-click the solution, add, I can go to new project here. And when choosing the projects, I already have my GUI here, this console application. So I don't really want another one, especially right now. Maybe in the future, it depends on my needs. <laughs> Everyone's needs are different. But something for like a business layer where you have code and pretty much just pure code, then you want something called a class library. So if I click next here, I can call the class library again, whatever I want. But if my application is called test app like that, then we might have something like BL for business layer or BLL for business logic layer or something like that, something representing a different layer in the application. So typically I would do like business layer, for example, and then this project would contain all of the business stuff, like the business end of the system.
So if you see over here, now we have two projects. We have our graphical user interface, and now we have our business layer here, and that will contain all the calculations and things like that. So now lastly, if I right click the solution again, I could add something like a data layer, maybe a database project or something like that. It could also be a, another class library representing the data layer. So something quite like that. And you could say um, DAO for data access layer or something to do with data or even DB for database. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. So I could call it something like that. And then this last project here, this third one would represent anything to do with tying our solution to a potential database, whether it's Oracle, SQL, MySQL, something like that. It doesn't matter. And now we have three projects. Now architecture, there's so many architectures available when building software. Like when bu building a building, there's not one way to build a building. There's so many different ways, but this is a very popular one. And what happens is if maybe you have 50 people on your team, you work for a company, some people will know about HTML, for example, but they're not going to know anything about maybe a database or complex C-sharp calculations in this project. So what happens is they will only work on this project. Similarly, if you're a database person, then you will only work on this database project here. So separating your solutions out by different projects also helps with teamwork and things like that. So only people knowing about the database, for example, would work with this database project. So that, that's kind of like some of the reasoning behind it. So how do I get my project here, for example, this GUI, how do I get it to talk to this project? Because by default, I've added three projects here under the solution, but none of them are talking to each other. So how do we achieve that? So if I go to my graphical user interface, for example, this project here, I go to dependencies here. Now, depending on the version of Visual Studio, uh, this is the newest one right now, it's called dependencies. If you have an older version, it might say references or something like that. So if you right click that and go to add project reference, when I do that, a window appears and now I can see all the projects in my solution as denoted by this kind of left hand menu here. So I want to check the projects that I want to tie to my GUI. So say I want to talk to my business layer where all the calculations are done. I just check that there and press OK. And now internally, my graphical user interface, this can now essentially talk to this project here, the business layer, where all the calculations will be. So let's put something, let's put a sample in here so we can just do something. Um, it's not going to do much. <laughs> so I've set up a very simple method here inside what's called the business layer. And what is, that is going to do, it's just going to return the string hello. That is all it's going to do. And I'm going to call it hello. I'm going to call it hello class. So now inside our business layer over here, I have a class called hello class. It has one method and all that method does is returns the string hello. So now if I go back over to my graphical user interface project here, test app GUI, and I type in, for example, hello class. So you can see it's not even in this list, but I, I've actually referenced the project to this one. So why can't I access it? Well, this is where namespaces come in. So if you've been following these tutorials so, so far, you'll see this keyword namespace quite a lot, almost in every file, and then it has a name. Typically, the name of the namespace is automatically generated from the name of the project, for example. So this project here is called Test App GUI. But if I go over to my business layer, my business project I created, you can see it's taken the name of the project here. Now namespace, it's just like a logical way of organizing things. So for example, we've talked before about the math class, for example, where we do math dot like absolute or square root or something like that.
But the math class, if I hover over this, you can see it belongs to a namespace called system right here. And by default, when I create a new project in Visual Studio, I'm given some namespaces by default. So all of these namespaces here, these seven, are provided to me by default. So essentially, I can use any code which Microsoft have provided me, which is contained inside any of these namespaces here. Just like I have a namespace here with a name, and I have some code in here, by default, I can utilize any code inside any of these namespaces. So this is very similar to what we have here. So what I need to do, well, I need to talk to the namespace where I have defined that method, because right now it's not here. You can see where we've defined the method is inside a namespace called test app PL. So if I copy that, I go back to my GUI layer right here. And right above here, I use a special word called using. And what using does, it allows you to use a different namespace. So if I just paste in that namespace here, followed by a semicolon, if I type hello class now, you can see I have access to that. So essentially by using this namespace, I have access to anything inside this namespace inside this file. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so now because hello class is defined in test app BL namespace, as you can see right here, it's inside the namespace. I can access all of its features. So I'm going to create a new instance of hello class right here. And now I can say hello dot return hello. And that will get me that string. So this is how I can talk to a different class inside a different namespace, which is inside a different project. So now for ultimate clarity, if I come over to my solution here, I go to my test app business layer here, and I go to a class here, for example, you can see it has the default namespace. If I create a brand new class, so I go right click, add new class, I call it whatever I want, it doesn't matter. You can see again, it has the same namespace because it's taken from the project. So it doesn't matter how many classes I create, by default, it will take the name of the project for the namespace, but you can rename the namespace to whatever you would like. So you can see that's the power of namespaces in C -sharp. And you can have nested namespaces, for example, a namespace inside a namespace, which is quite common in Visual Studio. You can see there's a namespace called system. Inside of that, there's one called collections. And inside of that, there's one called generic. Think of a namespace of, as a way of grouping things together. So if you have, have anything inside a project, which is to do with one project, so all your code, for example, in the business layer, like the heart of the application, that will be one project, one assembly, for example. However, inside that project, you might have different things, like you might have part of the project to calculate the area of a, of a house or something. But inside that project, you might have something completely different, like calculating a tax return. But maybe those two things might have to exist inside the same project for whatever reason. And in that case, you would logically group them in perhaps a different namespace. So anything to do with working out the area of a house, you might call that a one namespace. And the other one for doing tax returns or whatever, the example could be anything. And that could be a different namespace. So you're kind of logically grouping by maybe an activity or a function or whatever you decide. So when thinking of projects, think architecture, like how you structure your solution. But when thinking of namespace, think of more logical things, like how you group similar pieces of code together. And that's sort of the difference in this case.
So I'm just going to show you one more thing with regards to multiple projects and assemblies and things like that. Now this is quite a complicated subject, quite a large subject really, but what I'm showing you is enough to kind of follow through the remainder of these tutorials. But not only that, but when you start your own solutions and projects, you have a general idea of how you're supposed to structure things and also how to organize your code, which is very important the bigger your projects become. Now if we come over here, we have our solution here with our three projects underneath. Now each one of these represents like an assembly. It's, it's, a, it's a word you're going to hear a lot, but when people talk about assemblies and the internal access modifier, then it's internal to the assembly, which is typically represented by a project, one project per assembly. Now if I come over to this green play button right here, when I click this, our solution is compiled. All of our projects are compiled and an assembly is created for each of our projects. So if I go to my file system now, now I'm using a Windows system. For the GUI project here, it's making a GUI exe file right here. And again, some various files with that. But you can also see it's actually creating a DLL file here for each of our projects. Now these are what's called assemblies here because we have three projects in this case we also have three assemblies so here you can kind of see behind the scenes and how this is represented in the real world so when you give this software to your friends or maybe package it up into a setup file you can see how these projects are represented as binary files right here so typically one for each project one thing I will mention is that having this using keyword up here is somewhat optional. If I decide to remove it, for example, you can see this is no longer going to work because it cannot locate the namespace where this class is contained within. What we can do in this case is just qualify it with the namespace. So every time I use hello class, I have to tell the system where it's located, like what namespace is it within. So in this case, I can qualify it with the namespace before the class name. But if I keep using this class in this file, you know, maybe 10, 20 times, I'm going to have a lot of kind of redundant code here. So rather than doing that, I can remove all of those and just kind of use the namespace at the top of the file and then I no longer need to qualify it every time I use it. So that's an advantage of using the namespace here in C-sharp. 